maybe later we can set up. Later. Yeah. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد When news of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, death reached to the people in Medina, there were different types of reaction. Some people, they just went away from the people, secluded themselves from the people, did not want to talk to anyone. Others, they were in disbelief. Like Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he was in a state where he did not want to face reality. And that's why he took out his sword and he said, whoever has said that the Prophet وسلم, has passed away, I will chop his head off. No, he hasn't passed away. He has only gone to meet Allah for 40 days just like Prophet, Prophet Musa salam did. And when he comes back, I hope that he chops off the hands and tongues of the hypocrites who have said that he has passed away. He did not want to believe that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, had passed away. And some of the companions, they just sat down and didn't know what to do. Why? Because it was the greatest calamity that had ever, that had ever befallen the companions and the people of Medina and the Muslims at that time. There was, a, there was no calamity greater than the death of the Prophet Wasallam. Why? Why was it such a great calamity for the companions? Why were they in a state of disbelief? It was because they loved the Messenger of Allah Wasallam so much that they loved him even more than themselves. And we as Muslims, we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده ووالده والناس أجمعين. None of you truly believes unless and until he loves me more than his, par his parents and his children and all of the people. And so they loved the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in fact, even more than themselves. And that's why upon hearing that the Prophet ﷺ had passed away, it was the greatest calamity in their lives. And you know how sometimes when you hear of, a, of bad news, you don't want to accept it. You don't want to believe and you're hoping that it is not true. And that was the case of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And it wasn't until Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for three days and he had not had time to go back home to take care of his family. And when he saw the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had improved, when his fever resided, resided somewhat, he, he sought permission from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to go, to go home. And it was there that they, he heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it was there that he heard that the Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had passed away. And so he hurried back to the masjid and he stooped down and kissed the forehead of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Tibta hayyin wa mayyitan ya Rasulullah. You are pleasant, dead or alive, O Messenger of Allah. He walked past Umar who was still in the masjid 
still in a state of disbelief, he went, on to the, he went up to the member and he gave one of the most powerful talks that any human can give that wasn't a prophet or messenger. At a very difficult time, with great tension in Medina. And he said, مَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ, فإن مَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ مُحَمَّدًا فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا قَدْ مَاتْ Whoever used to worship Muhammad, for indeed Muhammad has passed away. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ and whoever, has, whoever worships Allah, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيُّ لَا يَمُوتْ For surely Allah is alive and He never dies. And so, he then recited a few verses that were revealed before and the companions all knew these verses. One of the verses that he read was in Surah Ali Imran when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in the battle of Uhud and there were rumors that he had been killed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed بَعْدَ نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلَ قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa revealed, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ Muhammad is not but a prophet or a messenger. He's not but a messenger. Just like many messengers before, if he were to be killed or, if, or, or dies, or if he were to die or is killed, then would you then turn back on your heels? When this verse was revealed, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he was standing up. Umar, the mighty Umar, whom the shaitan used to run away from, used to take a path that was different from his path. His knees buckled. He could not stand up. His knees could no longer hold the weight of his body and he fell to the ground. Because reality had struck and he said, Ahadihi fi kitabillah. Is this in the book of Allah? Is this in the book of Allah? Meaning, please tell me it isn't in the book, isn't it, it isn't in the book of Allah. Because if it is, then the news is true. And he didn't know, he did not want to accept it. It was too hard for him to accept the fact that the Prophet had passed away. It was too difficult for him. Because there was no one on earth that he loved more than the Prophet. And then Abu Bakr said, yes it is. It is in the book of Allah, O Umar. And he broke down and cried and cried and cried. And it was the greatest calamity in his life. And in the lives of the companions. There was nothing more difficult for them to handle than that. And most of the companions would not have been able to persevere through the difficulties. If Allah did not give them the likes of Abu Bakr to be the Khalifa. Why? Because even though they lost the Prophet ﷺ in his physical form, they did not lose his character. They did not lose the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ. So that's why inshallah the next section when we speak about the Khulafa al-Rashidin, you'll see how they carry the message. And that's why many of them changed their lives after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. They made the conviction to carry this message, to the message of La ilaha illallah through all the areas of the world. And that is why we here in Malaysia have La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. They went to the different areas to spread Islam to carry the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There were some like Bilal, he was the Mu'addin. But he stopped being the Mu'addin because he wanted to carry this message. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, radiallahu anhu, he was the one who hosted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He went out to, to spread this message, to propagate, to convey the message of La ilaha illallah. So much so that on his deathbed he said when I die I want you to and he died in Turkey he said when I die I want you to go deep into enemy territory as deep as you can into enemy territory and I want you to bury me there 
why would he want his companions to bury him in a non-Muslim land? At that time, go, go deep, as deep as you can, and bury my body there. Why? Because on the day of judgment, when Allah asks me, why? Why were you buried there in the land of non-Muslims at that time? I can say to Allah, Ya Allah, it's because I came here. I went there to carry the message of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is why the companions carried this message to us. And so the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the history of Islam and the Muslims and it's our history. It's our history. It's about us. It's about how this message came to us. And it's also about what we, what we are going to do with it. Now when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, I mentioned that the lives of the companions changed. Many of them. Remember Bilal, he did not, he, he, he did not make the adhan. He was not the mu'adhan anymore because he went to convey the message of La ilaha illallah. And when the Muslims arrived in Jerusalem, the keys of Jerusalem were to be offered to the Khalifa, Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu. And when Umar ibn Khattab, so this, these are the, the Christians who were living in Jerusalem at that time, they gave the keys to Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu, happily because they knew the justice of Islam. And so when Jerusalem was conquered peacefully as Mecca was, the companions remembered Bilal. Because it was there that Bilal gave the adhan. It was there that change came to Mecca. It was there that the idols were destroyed. And La ilaha illallah prevailed. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ordered Bilal to stand up on the Kaaba and proclaim the greatness of Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And it resonated in the mountains of Mecca. Time has changed. Mecca was changed forever. And when he went, when they received the keys of Jerusalem, the companions who were there, they remembered that and they said, Tell Bilal, tell Bilal, O oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, to make the adhan. And Bilal said, No, I can't. Do you know why? Because because he missed the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so much that any time, anything that would remind him of the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would bring him down to tears including the adhan that he used to make during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and so he didn't want to make the adhan but Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu insisted and he said, O oh Bilal, I am Amir al-Mu'mineen and I'm ordering you to make the other. أَطِيعُ اللَّهُ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Obey Allah and obey His Messenger and those of authority over you. He has no choice. This is by command of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And when he made the adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It resonated now in Jerusalem. Al-Quds and the companions remember the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they broke down and cried and Bilal broke down and cried in his adhan when he said Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah he broke down and cried because the loss of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the greatest loss that they had ever suffered why did they love the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so much? Well, let me start. Let's start. What's an average day in the life of the Prophet Let's start with Fajr. And we'll see how, the, how much the Prophet loved, how much the companions loved the Prophet One day at Fajr, the Messenger of Allah is leading the companions in prayer. He recites Al-Fatiha. And he hears a baby cry. And then he finishes Al Fatiha. And then he recites Inna a'tayna kal kawthar 
فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَانْحَرْ إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرْ He recites the shortest surah in the Qur'an. Normally, how many verses did he used to read? How, much, how many verses did he recite during Fajr? It was between 60 and 100 verses. But on this morning, he recited the shortest surah that a person can recite in the Qur'an. Why? When he finished, he turns around and he says, when I stood up to pray, I intended to prolong the prayer. But when I heard the crying of the baby, I felt for the mother. I felt for the mother. And he's thinking about the mother. And so I shortened the prayer. If we come back to our time right now, maybe some of the imams are leading the people in prayer and their baby cries. After the prayer, what do you think some imams would do? Sister, sister, listen up. You don't have to come to the masjid. And if you come, if you have a baby, leave the baby at home. Why are you bringing the baby to, the, to bother everybody? But that wasn't how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. He didn't scold her. In fact, he mentioned that he felt sorry for her. He was thinking about her. He was thinking about how she must have felt. And she, he was probably more merciful towards her than she was towards herself. And that's how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. He was more merciful towards her than he, she was even to herself. After prayer, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the morning, he would visit and help out, visit the elderly. And whatever they needed, he would take care of them. And that's why during the time of Umar, uh, during, during the time of Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, would lead the people in prayer. And then after Fajr, he would sit down and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he would go out. And of course, he's imitating, or he's trying to follow the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Umar al Khattab realizes that Umar, Abu Bakr, is not going home. He doesn't go home right away. He goes some other place. And he said, you know, I'm going to follow him because every morning I see him going in this direction. Where is he going? Where is he going? He's curious. Amir al where is he going? So he follows him one day. And he finds that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu went out to the outskirts of Medina to a very small house and Umar is staying far away from the house and he can see that he has gone into that house. And Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu is waiting to see when Abu Bakr leaves. Who is, who, is he, who is he visiting? Who is he visiting at this time? So when Abu Bakr leaves the house, Umar comes into the house and he says, he sees an old lady, a blind lady, who has two young children. And he says to her, do you know who just came? Who is it that comes every morning to you? Do you know who that, that was? And she says, I don't know who it was. But he comes every day. He takes care of my needs. He cleans my house. Amir al-Mu'min, I mean, Abu Khalifa Rasulullah sallallahu The leader of the Muslims is cleaning the house of a lady. And then he milks for me, he brings me milk. And he takes care of all my needs for that day, then he leaves. When Umar Khattab heard, heard this from her, he broke down and cried. And he said, al ya Aba Bakr. al ya Aba Bakr. Oh Abu Bakr, you have tired the khulafa who will come after you. Why? Because of the example that you are setting. Anyone who wants to follow your example will have no rest. But who was he following the example of? It was the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's who the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ 
we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy for all of mankind and the jinn. Al Alameen. On another occasion, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hears about a young boy. It wasn't just with the, the children or the elders only, the women, no, the children also. He hears about a young boy. Who is this boy? It is the brother of, Umar, uh, the brother of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He had a bird. He had a pet bird that he had. A bird that he had. And he loved the bird very much. The bird's name was Nugayr. The bird's name was Nugayr. And so he went to him. Upon hearing that the bird had died. SubhanAllah, imagine the Imam visiting a boy. Not because he lost his mother or father or aunt or uncle. He lost the bird. He lost the bird, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam visits him. The Imam, right? The leader, of the, 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 the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he visits him and he says, Ya Aba Umair, O Abu Umair, ma fa'ala Nughayr? What happened to Nughayr? He's asking him about his bird. But that's how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. And that's why sometimes we think in our time, we think that uncle that comes to the masjid with this frown on his face, when he walks by, all the children, oh, let's get out, let's run away, the uncle is here. Right? That's the face of piety and righteousness. We think that's the face of piety and righteousness. No, that's not the face of piety and righteousness. Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu, he said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Whenever he looked at me, he always smiled at me. And you know, he had such a special smile. It made him feel so special that he approached the Prophet ﷺ one day and he said, Ya Rasulullah, is Abu Bakr better than me or am I better than Abu Bakr? Allahu Akbar. He thinks he's better than Abu Bakr. Do you know why he thinks he's better than Abu Bakr? Because the Prophet ﷺ treated him so special. Every smile was very special. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, No, Abu Bakr is better than you. <laughs> I mean, Abu Bakr, everybody knows his status, right? In the Ummah, everybody. And you know, he didn't give up. He felt so special, he gave it another try. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, is Umar better than me or am I better than Umar? <laughs> SubhanAllah, he thinks himself better than Umar. Why? Because he feels so special. That special glowing smile that says, I love you. Made you feel special. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to see that smile in the highest level in paradise. And in Firdaus. Ameen, Ya Rabbi. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, No, Omar is better than you. And so Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu, he said, After that I knew, I realized that he was like this to everybody. This was how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. And that's why the companions loved him so much. They loved him. Because he loved them also. He wanted the best for them. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves this ummah. He wants us also to have the best. And so in order for us to show our love for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first thing you have to do is you have to learn of who the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. Who was he? Why is it that when we speak about our parents, or when we speak about a child, a brother or a sister, or a son or daughter of ours that died at a young age, when we speak about it, what happens to us? We get emotional, and we break down and cry. 
because we miss them, we love them. And we want to see them again. We want to be with them in Jannah. And it's hard. Those are great calamities when a person loves someone and they lose them. That person, to the companions and to the true believers, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was that person that they love more than anyone else. In fact, anytime you have a calamity, anything, something happens, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man usiba bi musibatin. Whoever is afflicted with a calamity, فَلْيَتَعَزَّبِي Then let him console himself with me. In other words, with the loss of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because that's the greatest calamity. And that's why the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, upon hearing, upon hearing that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was killed in the battle of Uhud, news of this rumor, the rumor reached Medina. And the woman heard about it. So a woman from Banu Dinar, she hears about it and the battle is over. And she comes to the Messenger of Allah looking for the Prophet after the battle and she says, where is the Prophet is he okay? And she's asking everyone who's passing by to see, she wants to see the Prophet So a man comes to her and says, your son has been martyred. And she said, but how is the Messenger of Allah Imagine hearing about her own son being martyred, but the only thing on her mind was the Prophet ﷺ. And then they said, no, he's okay. And she continues to ask, and the people are telling her, another person comes and says, your father was martyred. Another person comes and says, your husband was martyred. But the only thing that was on her lips was, but how's the Messenger of Allah ﷺ? How's the Messenger of Allah? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because all the calamities, anything that can happen to a person is nothing compared to this calamity because she thought the Prophet Sallallahu was killed even though she says, even though they tell her she's, he's okay because of her great love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She wanted to see, to hear, to see the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi with her very own eyes. Just to confirm, make her feel comfortable for, with, the, with the fact that he's alive. And so she finally sees, she lays her eyes upon the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and she says to the Prophet وسلم, Kullu musibatin ba'daka jalalun ya Rasulullah. Every calamity is jalalun, means it's minute, it's nothing. After you, O Messenger of Allah, as long as you're, you're okay, nothing else matters. Like all her fat, the most important men in her family have been martyred. But the only thing on her mind was the Messenger of Allah. Now you might say, why? How? Well, that's why we're here. When you know the life of the Messenger of Allah, when we find out about who the Messenger of Allah was, and how much sacrifice he gave, how much, what, you know, how much, he, how, how much sacrifice he gave to the Ummah mm -hmm. of why we ourselves here now we have the greatest blessing that anyone can ever have, and that's the blessing of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So, inshallah, I know it's the beginning, and uh, maybe I just want to, everyone to stand up for a second. Yeah, a second. Now we started a little bit late, but uh, maybe some of you guys were traveling a little bit.